Shalom Church, praise the Lord. Welcome to Chosen Treasure. My name is Benjamin Daniel. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this day. And I hope everybody has had a pleasant week. And I pray and hope that the week coming up will be a week of your the Lord's goodness, the Lord's mercy, the Lord's anointing, the Lord's favor upon your life as we have entered into the new month of June. So this day, I don't want to waste time. I want to get into this video. This has been uh, quite some time thinking about it, praying about it, asking the Holy Spirit to lead me and the Lord to lead me upon doing this video. It's been a little bit tough for the past couple of weeks. I was deciding whether I was not going to do it or going to do it because I know the kind of backlash you get for something like this. So today, as you've seen by the title in the video, it's cessationism, biblical or heresy. Now, probably some of you are wondering, what in the world are you talking about? What is this term? cessationism and i'm not going to try to bash people over here or put down churches or ministries or denominations but i have to be very blunt so this is going to be of quite a serious video today because we're talking about a doctrine that is infiltrated that has mesmerized people that has led many people astray and instead of being on fire for the lord jesus christ especially now in these end times and these last days that we're living in, we see the lethargy and the absolute nonsense that's going on in the church today. So I'm going to look at both sides over here, at the spectrum over here. So cessationism, what is it? Probably some of you have heard the term, you'll understand it. Probably you've gone to some kind of Bible study. Probably some of you have never even heard the term. So I'm going to give you a, a basic definition. But I want you to do this. This is free. You don't have to even pay for it. This Anyone can do this. Go with the chat GPT. I know I'm talking about AI tools over here. And put in this word and put in this question. Act as a Bible theology expert or act as a Bible theologian as an expert. And give me the basic definition of cessationism. And ChatGPT is going to give you a whole bunch of stuff. All right, when you get that answer, elaborate more. All right, I don't want a brief description. I want an in-depth theological definition of cessationism. You'll get the whole bunch of answers. And then the last one you're going to do is, is it biblical or is it considered heresy today? And you're going to get answers for that. So, no, I'm not endorsing ChatGPT to be your preacher or the replacement for the Word of God. No, absolutely not. But I'm just saying for, for the sake of making it kind of humorous and a kind of fun way, a cool way to do it, go into that and do it. But today, I want to give you the whole history from what I've gathered, the research that I've done for, for the past couple of weeks, because I've heard of this word for many years. And I'm led by the Spirit of the Lord to do this today because, honestly... I'm angry. I'm very upset and I'm very angry and really seeing how this theology has permeated into the church and instead of making stronger Christians, it only makes believers more weaker and weak, weaker. So you probably never heard of the term cessationist doctrine. Again, the word itself is so weird. Who came up with this term? Cessationism. And the opposite, what I am, is called a continuist. That means somebody who believes that this doctrine is not real and it's a continuation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit or cessationist theory. I'm going to call it a theory. Just like the theory of evolution can be easily debunked, I'm going to be talking about how we can easily debunk cessationism and the cessationism doctrine or theory. Most of you have never heard of it. You probably would have never come across it. And there are many who would have different ways to define it. But this is one way I'm going to try to define it. The cessationism doctrine, or what I call the cessationism theory, is the belief held by different denominations, especially those in the Calvinist and the Reformed theology. I'll get into that a little bit later. The belief that the working of the Holy Spirit, a.k.a. the gifts of the Holy Spirit, in the book of Acts, and wasn't just in the book of Acts, there was much more in the other scripture, in the other epistles, in the other books of the New Testament, passed away. It ceased. That's where they get the word cessationism. Just try to picture two groups or two nations warring each other. And they come to a point where they say there's a loss of life, there's a lot of destruction, we got to end this. Let's have a cease 
fire. Let's wave the white flag and say all hostilities must cease and come to an end. So that's where they get this word cessationism. So it's very important to understand the uh, background of it. Passed away, the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the working of the Holy Spirit passed away with the original apostles. What apostles are we talking about? Not self-proclaimed apostles and prophets today, which I'm going to touch upon a little bit later on. That's in the charismatic movement, which is an absolute mess. It is, and I agree with that. But the apostles, the 12 original apostles, minus Judas Iscariot, who killed himself, and the death of John, the last surviving apostle who died a natural death, who was exiled to the island of Patmos, and who the Lord Jesus Christ gave the revelation, what we call the revelation of Jesus to John about the end times and future events to come. So when John passed away, according to cessationists, it's their definition, it's not mine. I didn't come up with it, they came up with it. All the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the working of the Holy Spirit ceased, it stopped everything full stop period no commas nothing just complete end to it and it should no longer this is what they stress on no longer be expected no expectation no desire no looking for it don't seek after it don't run after it in the church today so they said John died 2,000 years ago, a natural death island of Patmos. And I just want to do a little visualization, a little dramatic effect, just like the Lord Jesus used parables. I'm not comparing what I'm saying to the parables of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but I want to give you a little drama, a little visualization over here. John is on his deathbed, surrounded by his friends, his families, his assistants, and he calls somebody and say, okay, I'm going to die. This is after he goes up to the third heaven, receives the revelation of the end times, the tribulation, the coming millennium, the new Jerusalem, the new earth, the new heaven, everything. He sees it all, comes back, he's about to die, and he calls his assistant and says, I want you to write this down. And to all his friends, to all his buddies, to all those who stood by him, in spite of the persecution that came at the hands of the Roman Empire, he says, I'm going to die, and I want you to write this down and seal it because it's my word. When I die, or after I die, John, the apostle, all gifts of the Holy Spirit are come to an end because I said so. Let that sink in. This is what cessation is. You see how difficult even to pronounce that word? It's such a stupid term, such a silly term. I haven't seen it in any of the major theological doctrines of what we call our Christian faith or our Christian belief. But here it is. It's happening today in the modern 21st century church with so-called origins and the history going back to the death of John. So this is what they say, that when John died, it all ceased. The gifts of the Holy Spirit ceased. The working of the Holy Spirit ceased. Signs, wonders, miracles, everything ceased. Everything. The Holy Spirit decided to go on a hiatus, on a break. The Holy Spirit decided to go to the Bahamas for a vacation for 2,000 years. This is what cessationists say. I'm not saying it. This is what they say. Everything ceased. Don't seek after it. Don't run after it. Don't expect it. See, Christians... We're not dumb. I know I'm not a dummy when it comes to the Word of God. I've been preaching, teaching, ministering, and studying the Word of God for 20 plus years in the ministry that the Lord has given my wife and I. And I'm no dummy. I'm not an amateur. And I'm not an expert either. But I do know that we're not running after the gifts. We're running after the one who gives the gifts, the Holy Spirit of God. What wrong is it? That's what I said. I'm really angry. This is ridiculous nonsense. This is garbage. This theory of cessationism is just pure heresy. And I've already given the answer to that. It's not biblical. Where in scripture do we find it by saying that you can't go after the gifts of the Holy Spirit? You can't seek the Holy Spirit of God. So the Holy Spirit now is saying, I'm not giving gifts out anymore. I'm only giving fruit, but the gifts are not needed. All right, so let's go on further. The working of the Holy Spirit would include the baptism with the Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Very contentious. 
I speak in an unknown language. I speak in the gift of tongues. And I praise God that the Lord gave me that gift. And I'm so blessed and so edified every time I do it. I don't have to do it publicly, but I do it in my private prayer time. And my spirit is strengthened. Every time I know that my spirit is getting low, that I'm facing some kind of issue or situation, that's what I get into. And I'm so grateful. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for that beautiful gift. No, it never ceased. And also includes the gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Mark this verse over here. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 to 11. When you get time after this video, you can even pause this video right now and go to that scripture. The laying of hands for healing and looking and asking God Almighty, Jehovah, Adonai, Elohim, to perform miracles with an expectation that that miracle will come to pass to confirm his word. That's what was happening in the book of Acts chapter 4. This doctrine is mainly believed by non-Pentecostal groups. You've got some in the Baptist, some in the Methodist. Oh, Methodist. What's happening to the Methodist church in America? Garbage. That's what happens when you deny everything from the Holy Spirit, when you think that you are above the Holy Spirit. Presbyterians, Lutherans, terrible, terrible Lutherans. And the worst of all, I would say the Reformed theology, Calvinistic, predestination, tulip crowd. They're the worst when it comes to this. Why are cessationists so prominent on YouTube today? And that's what I was doing for the past couple of weeks. Even though I heard about this theory and this doctrine for the past 10, 15 years, I heard about it and it was laughable. I decided to get into in-depth research and I found out for the past couple of months, there have been many Christian YouTubers and many Christian preachers, prominent ones, big names, that are putting out videos denying the gifts of the Holy Spirit, saying that it's seized, we don't need it, we don't need signs, wonders, miracles, or miracles for today, blah, blah, blah. Two things I want you to look at. You can do your own research. I'm not going to do research for you. As a Christian, number one, you should have critical thinking. Don't blindly follow some preacher, some pastor, or some minister, or some kind of big shot or a VIP in the Christian world. Don't do that. Don't even follow what I say. Be a barbarian. Have critical thinking. Think what the Word of God says, what Scripture says. So this is important. Do your research. There's a cessationist movie, it's called the cessationist movie, where they have all these theologians and Bible scholars and preachers giving their version and their interpretation. Not biblical, but their interpretation. And then there's a cessationist conference. They have this every year that comes out from the Calvinist and the Reformed theology crowd over there. Uh, let me just say this really quick, and I know it's going to irritate a lot of people. Good, get irritated. If it offends you, well, that's your problem. Take it up with the Lord. Don't waste my time on it. God's theology should never be reformed. Don't try to live in the Reformation ages. It's done with. It's over. It ain't coming back. People died because of it. Millions were slaughtered because of the Reformation period. And it really didn't change anything. You think the Catholic Church stopped? It even got worse after that. No. So forget about that. So the Reformed theology crowd, God's word redeems us. God's word renews us. God's word refreshes us. That's the word. God's theology should never be reformed. We're the ones who should walk in repentance before the Lord for trying to change his theology. So these people promote this and they have this cessationist conference. Imagine a bunch of grown-up Christian men, mostly men, I don't see many women in it, unfortunately, I don't know why, coming together, sitting in a semicircle on some big stage, not a pulpit, on a big platform with their legs crossed, with microphones in their hands, relaxing like they're in the Bahamas beachside over there, and denying and mocking the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and in turn, mocking God Almighty. And who are their favorite punching bags? Pentecostals and Charismatics. Right now on YouTube, there are more anti-Pentecostal and anti-Charismatic videos punching them, mocking them, scoffing them, and calling them out. And everybody's having a great gala time in these cessationist conferences. And there's one coming up in a couple of months run by a preacher. I'm going to name. I'm going to drop two names today. And if that irritates you, again, 
deal with it. So this is it. They have these conferences where they go on stage and they deny the power and the work of the Holy Spirit of God. And what does it do to the body of Christ? Nothing. No one comes out of it blessed. No one comes out of it with power from on above. No one comes out of it redeemed and refreshed. And the tagline for this conference is, are uh, the gifts and the miracles still in existence today? Wow. These people, these people have no fear of God. Cessationists. Like I said, it's a theory. Just like evolution. Evolution today can be easily debunked. Every atheist knows that. Every evolutionist knows that. Every biological scientific, scientific evolution theorist knows that. They can easily be debunked and torn to pieces. But the damage it did from the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, 90s, and even now in colleges, universities, workplaces, even in the churches, even in the body of Christ, is irreparable. It's horrible the damage they've done, what evolution. So the same thing, cessationism is a theory and the damage it has done, oh, it's terrible, it's terrible, it's shocking. And it makes me angry to see these people get away with such heresy. And what does it do to the body of Christ? It puts down the body of Christ, it makes them weak. And what does it do to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Mocks his name. What does it do to the third person in the, Holy, the, in the Trinity, the Holy Spirit? Mocks his name. The reformers, Calvin, Luther, main proponents of the cessationist doctrine, especially John Calvin, they promoted the Reformation and the cessationist doctrine during the Reformation period to kind of slap the face of the Roman Catholic Church and the authority of the Roman Catholic Church and Catholicism. Because Catholicism back then was not just about indulgences, it was about supernatural miracle signs and wonders. So when John Calvin got a, got a wind of it, he refuted it and said that, I want to go against all their miracles. So he's the one who kind of boosted up the cessationist nonsense. And one major motivator for the cessationist view was the reformer's defense of this Latin term, sola scriptura. I'm not Latin. I ain't Italian. No one's speaking Latin today. If you're learning Latin, stop. You got uh, Duolingo, probably that will do better. You got ChatGPT, that will probably do better. Stop learning Latin. It's not going to help you win anything unless you are a closet Catholic. If you're a Protestant learning Latin, you must be a closet Catholic. That's for sure. So according to their theory and their doctrine of cessationism, the way they went against the gifts of the Holy Spirit, they say it's all ceased, is because of sola scriptura. They said that the continuing gifts of the Holy Spirit, the spiritual gifts, the need for apostles and prophets, which I'll come to a little bit later on, weaken the authority of scripture. Oh gosh, I'm getting a headache here, folks. I only got a headache a couple of weeks ago studying this and doing my research on it and watching these videos over here. And I, I had to laugh because I do know seriousness is not a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Joy is. So I laugh at this. They weaken the authority of Scripture. And I like this argument because you can easily debunk it. The gifts of the Holy Spirit were not given to write Scripture. Scripture has already been written. The Holy Spirit inspired people to write that, especially for the New Testament. That the purpose of the gifts of the New Testament, and even in the New Testament church today, the 21st century church, is not to write scripture to contradict it, but is to build up the church in love and in power. For the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but has given us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Three things that cessation is lack. But what did they want to do? Fear. They want you to have fear. They want you to mock. They want you to be in that self-righteous attitude. You don't want power from on high. You don't want the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You don't want supernatural gifts of signs, wonders, and miracles. And you call yourself a believer and a Christian? Yeah, I I'm asking that question. So this is it. They say that it contradicts Scripture. Again, lousy argument can easily be debunked. The gifts are not given to write scripture. The gifts are given to build up the church in love and in unity to build up the kingdom of God. Fine. So, 
I've heard the arguments, so-called biblical arguments, biblical arguments or biblical proof that the working of the Holy Spirit passed away with the original disciples, the original 12 disciples. End of John, again, what I gave, the visualization, little drama over there. When John died, he says, oh, everything you see is after I die, after I kick the bucket, all the gifts have ceased. No. So the proof they use, proof, is in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 to 10. I want you to stop this video if you want to, or even after it's over, read 1 Corinthians chapter 13 in the entire context, without commentary, without interpretation. You will understand why. Which says, charity never fails. Whether they be prophecies, they will, be, they will fail. Whether they be tongues, they shall cease. This is from the KJV. Whether they be knowledge, it shall pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, when the perfect is to come, that which is perfect shall be done away. Very simple verse to understand that when the perfect is to come, that is the perfection of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, not the end of the apostolic age. So what the proponents and the people will push cessationism, cessationists, because you can't separate the doctrine from the people will push it. What these so-called Christians push, I would call them heretics or semi-heretics. They say that it's all passed away because the perfect has to come. The perfect has come. The word of God has come. And this is in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. So what comes after 1 Corinthians? Look into your Bible, the 2 Corinthians. Then what comes after that? Then there's a whole bunch of letters. What comes in the end? The book of Revelation. The Bible is not even complete or written yet. John has not got his prophetic revelations. Titus is not in play. James is not in play. 1 and Peter, 1 Peter and 2 and 1 John are not in play. And already they're saying in 1 Corinthians that this refers to the end of the apostolic age. It's not come yet. And you're saying it's all ceased. That perfect coming, ask any biblical theologian or commentator, refers to the coming of the Lord Jesus. Why do we have spiritual gifts today? That's the question. What is it about cessationists and cessationism that they hate the power of the Holy Spirit. They don't want to see the people of God rise up in power, to be built up in power, and to walk in the power and the anointing and the desire and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Why? Why? Why are they so against it? Why are they always going after Pentecostals and Charismatics and bashing them and coming up with all kinds of ridiculous nonsense videos right here on YouTube? Rather than iron sharpening iron, looks like these people just want complete division in the body of Christ. And they're using truth. They say, oh, we need to be united in truth. Yes, we are united in truth. Show me one scripture verse. I dare any cessationist today, if you are one, show me a biblical scriptural text in proof, not just one verse, which does not talk about the end of the apostolic age, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It talks about the coming of the Lord Jesus, the perfect. The Lord Jesus is perfect. That's why he's coming back for his church. Not the end of the apostolic age, because the scriptures were not even finished be being written by then. Show me one scripture proof. I like what a preacher said recently. Uh, I read this online. It was not a video. Take a brand new believer, a brand new believer in the body of Christ, a new Christian, a new Christian convert. Give that person the scripture, especially the New Testament from Matthew all the way to Revelation. Let them even read the Old Testament. Keep them in the room. Don't lock them up in there. Keep them, let them read the whole New Testament. And when they come out, you can ask them, are you a cessationist? They're like, what in the world is that? What are you talking about? They will never come out as cessationists. They will say, yes, I see the power of God today. I've seen the miracles the Lord has done in my own personal life, in my family. And I'm so grateful that I have just a few of the gifts of the Holy Spirit operating in my life. For my glory? No, for the glory of the Lord. It's my benefit, but the glory goes for the Lord. There you go. That's what they say. It's ceased. It's stopped. The spiritual gifts are not stopped. They have not ceased. They take one verse, manipulate it, massacre it, 
twisted out of context. And this is coming from the sola scriptura crowd. Again, the Latin crowd. Speak English, man. Stop speaking in Latin. Solo this, sola that. Come on. All your biblical big talk and head knowledge and so much theology, but no love in your spirit. That's what cessation is lack. Like. They don't have love. They don't have concern. There's no fire of God in them. That's what makes me angry, that they get the platform and the stage and the pulpit and they spew their nonsense. And that's why churches are dead today. They're dead. Believers are dead. There's no renewal. There's too much reformed theology, reformation talk, but there's no renewal, no repentance in their hearts. Don't seek after the Holy Spirit. Don't run after gifts, blah, blah, blah. Go after fruit. And what fruit do you have? You don't even have love. For them, it's all about seriousness, not a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Joy is. Praise God. The gifts exist today to know more about Christ and to be built up in love. The gifts are given to us to serve one another in the body of Christ and to go out to a dying, sinful, wicked world out there and tell them that the power of Jesus is still active today, that the power of God is still working today, that the blood of Jesus still works today, that the cross has not lost its power, and the Holy Spirit is still ministering and pouring out His gifts because the gifts of the Holy Spirit are irrevocable. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, forever. Ha! Deal with that, cessationists. And it's also a way for us to know the love of Christ more deeply. Oh, these people, they are the perfect Christians. Whenever I come across a cessationist or the cessationist doctrine, it only reminds me of one group in the Bible who used to hound Jesus, mock him, insult him, scorn him, make fun of him, deride him for every miracle that he did, for every sign and wonder that he did. And who was that group? Pharisees. There's a relation. Again, Christian man, if you call yourself a Christian. Christian woman, if you call yourself a Christian. Christian couple, Christian family, if you call yourself Christians, believers. Use critical thinking. Be a barbarian. Stop burying your head in the sand and listening to all these other nonsensical nonsense cessationist doctrines coming out. Who were the ones who hounded Jesus and mocked him for the signs, wonders, and miracles he did, and even for what he was preaching, the Pharisees? And today we see cessationists with the same spirit, the same attitude. They are so unhinged, so immature, so pathetic in their doctrine and theology that they will have a conference, a conference in the sight of God Almighty, praying over it that people will not fall or people will not get into the gifts of the Holy Spirit, or even desire it, or ask for it. They don't want to see people moving in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. They want dead, lukewarm Christians standing there, sitting there. Even zombies have life. They're worse than a wax figure. No emotion. Nothing. No feeling. Nothing. No desire. Nothing. Zero. That's what it is. We all know, and I agree with this, that one day we will not need these gifts when we see the Lord Jesus face to face. Even the book of Revelation says we don't even need the sun because the Lord will be shining brighter than the sun in the new Jerusalem and the new earth and the new heavens. That's when everything will cease. Preaching will cease. Prayer will cease. Everything will cease. All we'll be doing is worshiping and praising the Lord day in, day out. And the gifts will cease. But till the Lord returns, till he tarries, the gifts are still needed today. Until that day, we are called. We are called and chosen. Yes, God has qualified me. And I pray and hope that the Lord has qualified you before man can ever do that. He has, we, he has called us. He has chosen us. He has anointed us. He has appointed us. And to be empowered by the Lord to use these gifts in love, in compassion, in a balanced way. 
to be cautious, but to be open, not to go overboard crazy with these gifts where we're using the gifts so that people look at me or look at me. I speak in tongues or look at me. I lay hands. People are healed or look at me. Uh, I could prophesy or look at me. I, I have the gift of knowledge or look at me. I have the gift of miracles. No, if you're doing that and I'm going to call you out, you're a fool and a buffoon. Stop that. You're a heretic when you do that. The gifts of the Holy Spirit should point to the Lord Jesus. That's why you have gifts. Without the anointing, people will look at you as some kind of charismatic leader. And that's why people in the Pentecostal charismatic movement, they become a punching bag because they take these gifts and unfortunately because of rotten apples in the whole basket, it spoils it. And everybody looks and say, all Pentecostals, all charismatics, you're all the same. That's not true. That's not true. And I could say that all Reformed theology and all Calvinists are all heretics. I could say that every Lutheran, every um, Presbyterian, every Anglican, every Baptist, whew, they're all heretics too. You're always going to find rotten apples in every denomination. You don't put them under one umbrella and call them out. No. So we have these gifts to love one another and to experience these gifts, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are re, are re <laughs> irrevocable. I don't want to say irrevocable, irrevocable. Please do not abuse these gifts. So that's what I'm saying. We, we have the gifts. Do not abuse them. Do not come up with counterfeit tongues, counterfeit miracles. And that's why people look at just that and they say all of it is fake and we don't need them anymore. And that's why cessationism is very dangerous. And we do know. In a way, I kind of agree with what cessationists do say, just this part, that the fruits always outrank the gifts. But the gifts are still in operation today. And that's why, from a biblical theological point of view, zero evidence that the gifts have stopped. No, I don't see anything in scripture that indicates only certain gifts are in play and certain gifts have stopped. No, I see everything. And that's the problem with man-made theology. Man-made theology comes up with this nonsense saying that the gifts of the Holy Spirit have all ceased. But biblical theology, pure biblical theology, not reformed theology, biblical theology says otherwise, no. Fine, the Lord Jesus hasn't changed. He's the same yesterday, today, forever. So I want to drop two names. Like I said, you cannot separate the doctrine from the people. Two people will promote this a lot. And I've seen their preaching. I've seen their teaching. I, I have seen the way their attitude is. And I could say that they are absolutely horrendous. The first one is John MacArthur. I know all of you are like, oh, John MacArthur, don't touch him. He's such a big preacher. He's come up with so many wonderful commentaries. What is a commentary? No, seriously, what is a commentary to those who buy commentaries? New Testament commentary, Old Testament commentary, epistle t t commentary. A commentary is just an interpretation. I can come up with a commentary. It's not difficult. It's not inspired by the Holy Spirit. That's the word of God is we have 66 books, the canon of scripture. It's just interpretation, opinion put together in a book to make money out of it. That's what a commentary is. There's only one commentary I have which was gifted to me by a pastor friend. When I got ordained as a pastor, he gave it to me. And that was the Dake's commentary, which I love. It's an amazing one. There's so many other commentaries out there. I look at them. But to say that there's one commentary because it came from John MacArthur's the best one. Please spare me that nonsense. So this guy is a hardcore Calvinist, reformed theology, cessationist supporter and a pusher. He's one of the main people behind these conferences, like I said, right? Now, when you watch John MacArthur preach, there's no joy in him. Like I said, seriousness is not the fruit of the Holy Spirit. This is a man who pastors a mega church, and yet he goes online, criticizes other mega churches. Well, he forgets that his church, one of the biggest in California, the worst state, the most demonic state in the whole of the USA, kind of makes me wonder if you were such a great preacher, and all the others are not so good in all the mega churches. What has your church done lately for that state of California in the area that you're in? Nothing. No revival. Zero. You walk in, you walk out the same way. That's it. So he preaches on cessationism a lot. He promotes it. And to him, 
nobody is qualified. This is a man who calls out preachers and say that he's not qualified, he's not. He's deciding already who's saved and who's not saved. Imagine, he puts himself above the power of God. <laughs> and he pastored the church where there was sexual abuse, spousal abuse, and even child abuse, and he all covered it up. So it's very easy to go and punch on Pentecostals and Charismatics, but when you've got problems in your own backyard, you don't want to call them out. So I would be very wary to mark and avoid the teachings of John MacArthur. Very, very dangerous because he portrays himself as this great Bible teacher, this great preacher, this great theologian, but behind it all, ooh, that's when you see the real nonsense. So be very careful. Don't elevate preachers above the word of God. And just because he says so, he is not the guardian of Christianity. He's not the overlord of Christianity. No. The second person that you have to be very wary about who promotes cessationism is a wheelchair-bound preacher by the name of Justin Peters. Here's a man. <laughs> what can I say? I've seen his videos. He's become an internet celebrity, internet Christian celebrity kind of preacher. He puts out all this preaching and these videos to mock, criticize, condemn, downplay, and to call out Pentecostals and Charismatics. Sometimes he does the right thing to call out the nonsense in the Charismatic Church, but most of the time he puts them all in the same basket. And he's a hardcore cessationist over there. And he's running the cessationist conference coming up where they ask one of the most dumbest questions ever. Even a brand new believer would even think, why even ask this question? Somebody who came from a pagan background, are the gifts of miracles, signs and wonders still in operation today? Oh my gosh. So what are the qualifications of cessationism? They're not in scripture. So it's coming up in the minds of John MacArthur, Justin Peters and going all the way back to the Reformation period to Calvin and the whole bunch of other heretics over there. What can I say about these two? There are many more. So I want to give an open challenge to John MacArthur and to uh, the self-proclaimed overseer of Christianity, Justin Peters, who is deciding what is from the Holy Spirit and what is not from the Holy Spirit to mock and to criticize the work of the Holy Spirit and to mock and criticize those who operate under the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I want to give an open challenge to both of them. Come down to India. Get off from your high horse and your ivory towers in America, which is finished because American Christianity is a joke. The American church is done. Wrap it up. No point putting a bow on it as a gift. Just wrap it up and throw it aside. It's done. There's real revival happening in, in India because of the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Signs, wonders, miracles, not counterfeit, not baloney, not fake, real ones, real ones. Come down, see them with your own eyes. That's an open challenge. And let's see if you're going to still spout the nonsense heresy of cessationism. Where is it in scripture? Zero, nada, zip. Nothing. Where is it coming from? Man-made theology. Too much book knowledge, but no passion, no desire, no expectation. They don't want people to know that they serve a supernatural God, that we serve a wonder-working God who does miracle signs and wonders today, accompanied by his word and the word of his power. They don't want people to know that. They just want you to be a lethargic, normal lukewarm Christian to go warm your seats, put some money in the bag, sing three songs, go home, boom, nothing, nothing, no passion, no desire. Oh, you have to fruit. They don't even know how to spell fruit. I'm done with cessationists. I'm done with this video. Like I said, um, it's, it's irritating to see such people get a platform and to come out with a whole breed, a whole generation of believers who are weak, dead, and lethargic, and not building up the kingdom of God. Keep this in mind. Gifts by itself point to us, which is wrong, which is very wrong. Glory goes to God our Father. Glory goes to the Lord Jesus. Glory goes to the Holy Spirit of God, the three in one, the Trinity. 
gifts with the anointing point to the Father in heaven. Gifts with the anointing point to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what people should seek after. I'm done today, church. It's up to you. You want to believe cessationism, that's on you. The proof should be on them. The burden of proof should be on cessationists. And so far, what I've seen so far? Zero, zero scriptural evidence, nothing, absolutely nothing. So I know he probably is <laughs> upset because I mentioned John McCarthy and Justin Peters. Good, get upset. If you're offended, that's your problem, not mine. I'm just saying these people have got enough platform and enough, uh, they're given enough leeway to go and deceive people and to mock the gifts of the Holy Spirit and to even bring division in the body of Christ and instead of having a kind of, uh, I don't even know even what to say, not even a debate, but some kind of dialogue, they don't want to do it. At the end, they want to prove themselves right. You know what? Let them go. I'm done with them. I don't want to. I know the gifts of the Holy Spirit have not ceased because it's working in my life, in my family's life. And I've seen it in many people too. So the Lord bless you. <laughs> This was, a, this was not an easy video to make. I wanted it to go much longer because I got so much material to touch upon, but I have to cut short because I don't want you to waste your time watching videos rather than spending time in prayer, in fasting, and in ministering, and in preaching and teaching the Word of God. That's more important than watching YouTube videos. So you can even, don't even have to watch this video. You can just keep the audio on and go about your work. That's what I would recommend. So the Lord bless you and keep you and watch over you in this new month of June. The Lord's anointing, the Lord's favor. And I pray and hope that you will seek the Holy Spirit in everything. And if the Lord decides, because it's Him who gives the gifts, He has not seized anything. The Lord is not waving a white flag. The Holy Spirit is not waving a white flag because Satan is not waving a white flag. So we definitely need those gifts in love, in compassion, to build up and to edify the body of Christ and to move in power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. So if you desire, seek out the Lord. Don't ask me. I don't give gifts. The Holy Spirit gives gifts. So the Lord bless you, watch over you, keep you, and may his face shine upon you and your family in the coming week. And the Lord use you, use you in his kingdom, not in church activities and events, but use you in building up the kingdom of God and to be used as a witness, to be a fisher of men, fisher of people out there, to be a witness for the coming glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I leave you with this today. I bid you, Maranatha. Even so, come soon, Lord Jesus. Lord bless you. Shalom, church. And remember, the Holy Spirit has not seized anything. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.